Red Bull is in complete shock after being destroyed by McLaren. Mercedes is confused by their sudden loss of pace, and Logan could be replaced as soon as the next race. Do consider subscribing. Let's get straight into the latest F1 news. Haas F1 are seeing their equipment trucks held at Zandvoort, as an ongoing case against former sponsors Uralkali has seen them halted at the circuit. Haas were ordered to pay their former title sponsors, a part of a reported 30 meter fee brought to the team, after they ceased their relationship following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russian fertilizer company Uralkali, part owned by Dmitry Mazepin, became title sponsors of the team in 2021, and part of the deal saw them have his son, Nikita drive for Haas that year, but following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the team canceled their contracts with Mazepin and Ural Kali, and a Swiss arbitration court ruled in the company's favor after it claimed no money had been paid back to them after it had already paid Haas as part of its sponsorship obligations for 2022. Haas accepted the ruling, and in a statement given to PlanetF1.com, confirmed it would be paying the company in full. Haas fully intends to pay to Ural Kali all amounts due pursuant to the arbitration award, and there is no dispute over the amounts owed, it read. Haas has been working with its lawyers to ensure payment will comply with all relevant U.S., EU, U.K., and Swiss sanctions laws and regulations. We will continue working with Ural Kali in the coming days to resolve this matter definitively. After the Dutch Grand Prix, Haas trucks had been loaded with the team's equipment to be taken to Monza for the Italian Grand Prix but a Haas spokesperson confirmed to PlanetF1.com that the trucks will be unable to leave the circuit on Sunday night. PlanetF1.com understands the wait for the team to get on the road to Monza will not be a long one. However, with relevant payments having already been sent to Ural Kali, which need to clear before they can leave Zandvoort. Once the payment has been acknowledged, the team will be able to get on the move to the next race, and PlanetF1.com understands there are no concerns surrounding the team's participation in the Italian Grand Prix next weekend. Red Bull boss Christian Horner believes Sergio Perez can take the positives from his sixth-place finish at Zandvoort. Perez qualified fifth and raced to sixth place in the Dutch Grand Prix, scoring his best result since finishing fourth at the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix in May. After some sporadic form through the middle portion of the championship, Perez returned to a decent haul of points at Zandvoort after producing a reasonably strong weekend. Qualifying fifth place on Saturday without incident was followed by a race to sixth after he was overcome by Ferrari's Carlos Sainz as the Spaniard recovered from his 11th place grid slot, and team boss Christian Horner was pleased that his driver had contributed to the team's Constructors' Championship tally. I thought he did a solid job. I mean, if you look at his pace in the race, it was decent, he told media, including PlanetF1.com, after the race. Sainz had pace. At one point, he had the fastest lap of the whole race. But I thought Checo Perez, staring P5 and finishing P6, I thought that was a very solid drive by him today. Obviously, he lost a position at the start, which was a little frustrating for him, but I think that actually he'll take quite a lot of positives out of his performance here and hopefully puts him on a good trajectory for Monza. With Perez having reverted back to a previous specification floor and resulting setup on his car, Horner revealed that, based on feedback, it appeared Perez had been the happier Red Bull driver with the feeling of his car. We've run the cars in different specifications, and I think that that has actually given us quite a lot of valuable info, he said. I think that the driver's feedback has been very positive into that as well, in terms of what they're feeling from the different setups. So I think it, hopefully, now gives a real direction for the engineering group. I think it was clear that Checo's race package got the better of the two. But we've got all 72 laps of data across two different compounds of tires now to compare that info. Perez has had to weather plenty of speculation about his future with Red Bull in recent months, with the Mexican having his seat come under pressure as Daniel Ricciardo and Liam Lawson were both linked with a possible mid-season swap. Perez has been given the chance to steady the ship as Horner committed to keeping the 2023 championship runner-up in the RB20 for the foreseeable although questionable form over the next handful of races, could still end up with a change of heart if Red Bull's championship lead is wiped out by McLaren. Reflecting on his own race afterward, Perez said he suspected that, without one or two corners of the Zandvoort circuit in which he was losing most time, he and Verstappen could have been much stronger. Not happy, we didn't have the pace today, he said. We are still really hard on tires, and our medium speed performance was very weak, I think, taking turns 9-10 of the circuit. I think, without it, we would look a lot more competitive. 
I think we were suffering a lot with the conditions, with the tailwind, and probably McLaren and Ferrari were not suffering that much. But having finally delivered his best result in eight race weekends, Perez said the differing setups he and Verstappen had run had allowed for a lot of understanding of the Red Bull RB20. I think the positive thing is that we understand now what's going on with the car, he said. That's really positive. It's just a question of how quickly we can fix the issues that we have, but we know where we're lacking and where the issues are. Going forward, hopefully we can pick it up, and from Monza, we can be a lot more competitive. With Perez having reverted back to a previous specification floor on his car, the Mexican driver was tight-lipped on whether he had found the car an improvement from running the latest specification. I think there are a lot of things that will stay within the team, but I think right now the main focus is to understand the issue, he said. We know the way we have developed the car, we've lost some path, and we're definitely trying to bring it back. Lando Norris believes McLaren's MCL 38 is now F1's fastest car, having dominated the Dutch Grand Prix ahead of Max Verstappen. Having taken pole position in emphatic fashion at Zandvoort, Norris being beaten off the line proved merely an inconvenience for the British driver as Norris caught back up and overtook Verstappen before romping to a lead of over 20 seconds by the checkered flag. Having produced the type of dominant showing that Verstappen and Red Bull have produced more often than not over the past two years, Norris didn't attempt to downplay the potency of his McLaren as he spoke to media, including PlanetF1.com, after his second-ever F1 career win. Asked whether the McLaren MCL38 is now the best package on the grid, Norris smiled. Oh, 100%, yeah. The whole weekend, I think we've had the best car. We've had, on average, the best car for sure. We've not had a dominant car at any point this season. I would say, even if you go back to Hungary, as much as people hate me saying it, Max was still very quick in Hungary, he just didn't have a great race, but his pace was still very strong. Obviously, we know more information than people do on the outside, so we can comment in much more factual ways than people can who are just watching on TV and taking their picks and guesses. We've had, on average, the best car. We probably should have won two, three more races as a team, but we didn't. And we're not saying anything more than that. We should have won and we didn't. And it's because we've not done a good enough job and I didn't do a good enough job. With McLaren and Norris coming into the second half of the season with a steep uphill battle to claw back in the leads of Red Bull and Verstappen in the championships, Norris said the upgrades brought to Zandvoort show there is no relenting on the part of the Woking-based squad. We've worked hard over the summer break to just try and take a step back and reset and go again, he said. So yes, we've had a great car. This was the first time we brought some good upgrades to the car since Miami. They worked very well then and they've worked once again now, it's still a long way to go, so we still have to keep working hard because this is just Zandvoort. Monza is a completely different circuit, so we'll keep our heads down and keep chipping away. The MCL38 had revised front and rear suspensions, circuit-specific rear and beam wings, a revised floor, and a new front brake scoop as its upgrade package. By far and away the most significant of the updates, any of the front-running teams brought to Zandvoort. But even had the team shown up with the same parts available to it at spa franc Orchamps, Norris believes victory would still have been on the cards. I still feel like we probably would have won without the upgrades this weekend, he said. The upgrades didn't make us certainly a lot quicker here, but the upgrades we've been putting on the car, they've helped us every time. We put it on and it just did everything it wanted to do and needed to do and was meant to do. We've had little bits along the way, but just like tweaks, it's nothing that's like, here's performance. A lot of other people have, you know, so we kind of fell down a little bit. The order in terms of delivering parts and delivering upgrades, comparing to all of our competition, and this was the first time we really put something on the car to drive us a step forward, and it definitely did that. But it's like we're not been competitive over the last two months. Since Miami, we've been quickest in Budapest and very quick at certain other races like Barcelona and Silverstone and stuff like that. But small things make a big difference. Today, with how the car felt, I'm sure it was a step ahead. A new rear wing probably helped me get past Max today. So little things like that definitely help you go forward. Both Christian Horner and Toto Wolff said they would be willing to loan a driver to Williams for the remainder of the season if they chose to replace Logan Sargent. Mercedes team principal Wolf said he would be cheering for Mick Schumacher to get such an opportunity, 
while Horner said he would be open to loaning Liam Lawson to the team under certain conditions. Sargent is without a seat on the F1 2025 grid, as it stands as Carlos Sainz has been signed for Williams next season to partner Alex Albon, with the Americans' mechanics having worked hard to get him into the Dutch Grand Prix after a practice accident that Sargent admitted was a small mistake with big consequences. Careering into the barriers out of turn three, and his car having caught a light. Williams team principal James Vowles has been vocal in his backing of Sargent and his hope to help him into another seat within motorsport next season, be it on the Formula One grid or not, but questions about his future on the grid have been raised due to his ongoing performance relative to Albon in the sister car. For Mercedes team boss Wolf, he put his hand up for current reserve driver Schumacher to get the nod if such a switch were to occur, believing Formula One has not seen the real Mick after his two-year stint with Haas. I would very much hope that Mick gets the chance because we haven't seen the real Mick, Wolf told media, including Planet F1, Com and Zanvoort, when asked if he would like to see Schumacher at Williams, if they decide to make a change. You're not winning F4, F3, and F2, and you're underperforming in Formula One. I think he deserves a chance. I think the opportunity with Williams is something that we would be cheering for. For Horner, meanwhile, he said he would be willing to loan current Red Bull and V-Carb reserve Lawson to the team next weekend under certain circumstances, but admitted the question over their driver lineup was not for him to answer. It would depend on which terms and if we needed him back that we could have him back quite quickly, Horner said. But certainly if they needed a driver next weekend, you know, we'd be open to that. But that's a Williams question rather than one for us to answer. Red Bull's Max Verstappen has said there's no reason for his team to panic yet, despite the dominance on display by championship rival Lando Norris. Despite taking the lead at the start and getting track position ahead of Lando Norris, Verstappen was overtaken and left in the dust by the McLaren driver as he came home over 20 seconds behind his championship rival at Zandvoort. With Red Bull struggling to fight for wins in what has been a rapid turnaround from the form shown by the reigning world champions, Verstappen's big lead in the driver's championship no longer looks quite as secure as it has in the past. Victory at Zandvoort was completely out of reach, despite his early lead, with Verstappen having no answer to the pace shown by McLaren as Norris popped in the fastest lap on the very final lap on aged hard tires. Reviewing the weekend from his perspective as he spoke to media, including PlanetF1.com, following the race, Verstappen said there is some head-scratching going on at Red Bull as the team attempts to figure out what's gone wrong. The whole weekend has been the same, he said. I had pretty much the same balance from FP1 all the way to the race. I mean, the limitations are the same. So yeah, it's just very hard to solve at the moment. It just seems like we are too slow, but also quite bad on tire deg at the moment. So that's a bit weird because I think, in the last few years, normally we've been quite good on that. So something has been going wrong lately with the car that we need to understand, and we need to, of course, quickly try to improve. Asked what the issue he's experiencing with the car is, he explained, It's just not a connected balance, front to rear. Speaking to Sky F1 following the checkered flag, Verstappen explained some of the difficulties he's experiencing with his RB20. I couldn't do anything. Everything that I was trying to do, whatever I do with the car, the inputs are not really translating, he said. So when I steer left, it feels like the car is not steering left immediately, or it just doesn't turn how I want to, you know? It's very, very complicated to understand also why that is and how we can fix that. The Dutch driver explained he's been feeling these issues for some time during the season, with the severity of the problem dependent on the characteristics of the circuit he's driving on. Quite a while already. At some tracks, it's a bit worse, he said. It depends a bit on the type of track, but yeah, it's not easy. Asked to say whether the RB20 is the most difficult Red Bull he's had during his years with the team, Verstappen smiled. It's, let's say, not the easiest. Given how Red Bull started the year in dominant fashion, Verstappen was quizzed on whether the balance deficit has crept in as a result of the upgrades introduced to the RB20 through its development, or whether he could feel the shortcomings right at the start of the season. It wasn't there in the first few races, but yeah, something in the car has made it more difficult to drive he said. It's very hard to pinpoint where that is coming from at the moment. That is then hurting our one-lap performance, but also our long run. With Helmut Marko branding Red Bull's weekend alarming given the performance on display from McLaren, Verstappen said there's no reason for panic to set in just yet. 
having salvaged second place from what he viewed as a bad weekend. I think this weekend was just a bad weekend in general, so we need to understand that, he said. But in the last few races already, they haven't really been fantastic, so that I think in a sense was already a bit alarming. But we know that we don't need to panic. We know we are just trying to improve the situation, and that's what we are working on. But F1 is very complicated. Lewis Hamilton believes he could have fought for a podium at the Dutch Grand Prix had it not been for his disastrous qualifying session at Zandvoort. The Mercedes driver started P13, opting for an aggressive two-stop strategy as he crossed the line in eighth position, picking up four points. Despite starting almost 10 places behind George Russell, who lined up fourth, the 39-year-old finished one place and less than five seconds behind his teammate. Hamilton was eliminated in Q2 during Saturday's qualifying session and was due to line up P12, but for a three-place grid drop for impeding Red Bull's Sergio Perez in Q1. He was elevated back up after Alexander Albon was disqualified and Kevin Magnussen was forced to start from the pits. I think we could have been close to a podium today, the 105-time Grand Prix winner told Sky Sport F1 when pondering what might have been had it not been for his poor qualifying. I don't know whether or not we were faster than the Ferraris, but there were elements of our pace which was really, really strong. But the car was not great compared to the last race at Spa-Francorchamps. We have a lot more pace in the last race. Today, we were a lot closer to the others. Despite his strong race pace, Hamilton was quick to highlight that his W15 was not performing to the level it was prior to the summer break, when he won two of three races to close the first chapter of the F1 season. The seven-time driver's champion explained what caused the issues on Saturday, which contributed to his early qualifying exit. I was much happier today, Hamilton said. I was moving forward. Ultimately, I think the car felt better before. Even though I had a lot of understeer in FP1, the car felt great, and even for FP2. And then we made this change overnight because we had so much understeer, and then it just flipped it on its knife edge. It just flipped onto the other side. So we backed out a bunch of wing for the race, and I was progressing. I felt like I was moving in the right direction, but just too far back, unfortunately. I think if I qualified where George Russell was in fourth, I would have finished at least there, if not further ahead. That's it for today's video. I'll see you around.